Hello, hello everyone. How's it going? Hello, welcome to Recruitment in the Spotlight. Today we're here with Orange County Fire Authority. Good morning, Orange. <laughs> All Orange. right, Orange good Canada. morning, good morning. Yes, yes indeed. All right, so before we get into uh, introductions, I do just want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Lasana Pakeman. I get to be your host. Uh, Lasana Pakeman, she, her pronouns. I get to be the recruitment manager for CalJack and so happy to be here. Um, we want you to know that if you're interested in becoming a firefighter, we highly recommend that you go ahead and smash the like button, that you subscribe to our channel, and also make sure you turn on notifications for future episodes. We post videos about the CPAT, FCTC written testing, information about departments that are hiring, and so much more. Um, joining me today, we also have the FCTC program director, Mitch Dienda. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Lasana. Thank you for having me. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'll be here to uh, relay your questions from the comments in YouTube to our panel. So make sure to put your questions in the comments or chat below. Um, I believe you have to be a subscriber to our page in order to do so. So uh, like Lasana said, hit that subscribe button and uh, send us your questions. And also for anyone that hasn't already, uh, we'd love to know where our audience is coming from. So. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from and uh, hope you enjoy the episode. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right in. So, okay, so Orange County Fire Authority, warmly known as OCFA. All right, all right. Well, let's go ahead and start out with some introductions, uh, and we can start with you. If you could tell us um, your name, your rank, how long you've been with the department, and if there's any other um, tidbits you'd like to share about yourself and your journey. Uh, so my name is Shannon Dorsey. Uh, I'm a firefighter rank. Uh, I'm currently serving the city of Santa Ana. Uh, I'm 38 years old. I've been here about three years uh, so far, and I'm just excited to get here and answer questions for people just because of, you know, it's, it was a tough uh, road for me, not knowing the background, not having the background, not understanding the process. So uh, I want to pay it forward and just make sure I give, we give as much information as we can to help people understand the process uh, front to back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And if you could um, also add on just kind of your journey into the fire service. Oh, sure. So my journey, I was always athletic. I always played sports. Um, I liked to be around the teams, about to be around the crews. Um, the sport I played the most was football. Uh, I played that all the way through college. Um, and through that journey, uh, I realized how much I like being around my team, like being around the atmosphere of, of coming together with our team and taking the ups and downs, the wins, the losses as a team, as a group. Uh, so that was always in my head, always something I wanted to do. Uh, but when I got out of college, I looked into the fire service and initially I talked to guys in Fresno where I graduated from and they're saying, firefighters, and they're saying eight years, 10 years, and 21 years old, I wasn't ready to hear that. <laughs> so I just dove into the workforce. <laughs> I moved back down to Southern California. Uh, worked at Edison, a family friend got me in there, so I was doing IT for a while and sitting at a desk just wasn't for me. Um, so three years of that, I realized it's time to get into the team atmosphere. I, I needed to be in the team atmosphere again, uh, working with a crew, and at the time all I knew were uh, police officers. So I tried my hand in that, wasn't for me. <laughs> so, uh, but while I was doing it, the short time I was there, I realized that while I'm on calls with medical aides, with, with firefighters, I was more intrigued with what they were doing. Um, so I just knew it's, I needed to just go that route. So right before I got on probation as a police officer, I decided, nope, I'm gonna step away, uh, kind of abruptly. Um, so at that point, it was kind of survival mode because I had a little one on the way. So I just worked wherever I could. I worked uh, Caltrans for a little while, um, Coca-Cola for a little while, um, uh, and then Target, too, uh, right? Target Warehouse, <laughs> actually, yeah, Target Warehouse was the most recent one, and that was um, uh, in maintenance. But all these things actually, they kind of come together and they give me a good background to come into the fire service, right? So uh, when I was at Target, though, I was able to go to EMT school, working with their schedule. And as soon as I got out of EMT school and took past my registry, I went straight and started flooding the market. Um, but I always heard that Orange County was one of the destination departments, so. I applied here, didn't pass the written the first time through, <laughs> had to come back six months later. Mm -hmm. I passed at that time and here I am and I haven't looked back, the best decision I could have ever made. There we go and, and now you're 
here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and so Chief McQueen, let's, let's hear from you. Okay, good morning, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Ray McQueen, I'm a battalion chief with the Orange County Fire Authority. Um, I work at Battalion 10, which serves the city of Irvine. Um, I've been in the fire service for 17 years total and with the Orange County Fire Authority for 11 years now. A uh, little bit about my journey. Um, I knew I wanted to be a firefighter from a very young age. It's pretty much the only thing I was sure that I ever wanted to do. Um, when I was young back in the day, uh, we ended up witnessing firsthand uh, an emergency, a pretty significant emergency. And I remember the scene was very chaotic. There was a lot of commotion, a lot of chaos. Uh, it was pretty traumatic, if you will. All of our neighbors were outside. Eventually, the police department and the fire uh, department came on scene in that particular city. And we just saw how they kind of managed and controlled the chaos. And all of our neighbors were under the impression, and we all had that confidence that the patient's greatest chances were with the fire service. They ended up loading the patient up and taking him to the hospital. But as a young kid, for me to watch that play out from start to finish, from that third person perspective, uh, it really resonated and it really sat with me. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I knew that that was a cool career, something I wanted to do, and I wanted to do something significant with my life. Uh, what better way, in my opinion, was to be a firefighter? What better way other than to be a firefighter um, in terms of public service? So that was my journey. Uh, I set my sights uh, on the fire service throughout the duration of my uh, path to becoming a firefighter. I was involved in uh, football, baseball, track, all throughout uh, high school. Um, I was always familiar and comfortable in that team atmosphere. I liked the camaraderie, but I also liked the variety as well. So going through, I recognized that being a firefighter in the fire service in general was the one particular job that was conducive to every aspect of my personality. Going through the years, that just made me more sure that it was what I wanted to do. Uh, recruitment and outreach from the fire department in our local area was a huge thing for me because starting from a young age in high school, the firefighters gave me a rundown in terms of what the culture was like, what the best and most efficient steps to become a firefighter was like, um, the educational requirements, if you will. So I ended up going to college and paramedic school at the same time. I worked on an ambulance um, as a paramedic in EMT, and fortunately, uh, right after college, because they reached out and I had a lot of mentorship, um, I started the fire service um, right after college. And from there, the rest has been history. I don't regret it. It's the greatest job in the world. Beautiful. And now you're here? Now I'm here. <laughs> Happy to be here. All right. And so, Ryan, how about you? Yeah, my name is Ryan Carlisle. Uh, originally from New York, I am a firefighter paramedic on Engine 222, serving the city of Laguna Hills. And I am in my third year with the OCFA. Okay. All right. And how about your journey into the fire service? You've had a really interesting story. Yeah, my journey is also through sports. I grew up uh, selfishly obsessed with sports and performance and just reaching goals and metrics. So I did that all through high school and college. It's the only reason why I did well in school. It's the only reason why I went to college, so I could play and compete, and I thought I could do it forever. By the time I got to college, I was pretty burnt out. I was playing softball for about 15 years at that time. I studied abroad in Australia, and that's where I discovered rugby. I had a lot of fun watching it, and I decided I wanted to play it. So when I came back to America, my university had a club rugby team. I walked on. It was a blast. I learned the sport. And then I realized rugby was in the Olympics. And I was like, wow, this would be really cool if I got really good at this and went to the Olympics. So that's what I did. <laughs> and I learned it aggressively all through college. Um, I moved out to California to train at the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista with the national team. I did that for 11 years, traveled all over the world playing. And there's absolutely nothing better than being a part of a team, traveling the world, being outside all day, and getting paid to play sports. So Sounds when fun. I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a blast. Um, and that's pretty much what my entire life was, was sports outside, in a uniform, having fun. So then when I was told, oh, you're kind of old, like, time to get out of here, I was like, whoa, what am I going to do? I didn't plan for this to end. I thought I was going to do this forever. And that was kind of like my rude awakening. Uh, I did go to college. I got a degree. I got my master's degree in business marketing. So I was like, all right, I have this degree. Might as well go get a job doing that. Got a job, and I hated it. <laughs> I just, it was my first time being inside all day, first time staring at a screen all day. I was in a cubicle, and I just kept looking outside the window being like, that's where I belong, outside. Right. 
So then I just really had to look inside, uh, reevaluated what my values are and what was important to me, and that was teamwork, being physically, emotionally, and mentally challenged all day long, wearing a uniform, not having to pick out what to wear, um, and just uh, being super active and part of that group team. So then I was like, okay, what jobs can I do with that? It was pretty much police and fire, what, what it came down to. Throughout the whole interview application process, I did some ride-alongs. I just spoke with people in both fields, and I just started really relating to and vibing with firefighters more, and that's kind of how I ended up in the fire service. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Frank? Um, <clears throat> my name is Frank Bernados, fire captain, paramedic with uh, Orange County Fire. Uh, I'm currently stationed in Laguna Hills on engine 222 like Ryan on C shift. Uh, as far as my background, I have a bachelor's degree in kinesiology uh, with an emphasis in sports studies, and I got that degree from uh, Cal State Fullerton. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about my journey, uh, I've been really blessed and immersed in the fire service as, as, a, as a young kid. Uh, I was raised in a very uh, tough area, I was born and raised, and still live in Santa Ana. And uh, I would walk every morning uh, past the fire station and the fire station that uh, currently Shannon's at 75, which is the downtown uh, Santa Ana station. So I'd be walking down the sidewalk and I, it was very impactful for me that every morning, the, at the time I didn't know it, but the apparatus engineer would be out there wiping down the apparatus, checking out the apparatus. But every time I would walk over there with my you know, 50 pound backpack, me walking 60 pounds, just trying to carry <laughs> this thing to school, uh, the firefighters were very open and, and welcomed me into their fire station, uh, let me you know, jump on the fire truck, conk the horn, and that was very impactful for me uh, as far as like a family atmosphere and they were very welcoming. And for me that was, wow, uh, what a career. And maybe if I grow up, at the time I didn't think about it, but it's like maybe when I grow up I can look at maybe doing something like that. So as I progressed uh, through my uh, life, uh, just like the, the panel here, I had an athletic background. I really catered to athletic performance, being the best that I could be, uh, reaching goals and objectives that I've always wanted. So I was very fortunate to play basketball at high school when I walked on at Cal State Fullerton. I played Division I basketball. That was one of the biggest goals for me. I'm a little bit more of an undersized athlete as per se, an athlete. I'm 5'8". Uh, but some of the things that I can but control. With that height, you guys contributed some huge things. Absolutely, <laughs> my senior year, we beat you know we beat UCLA double overtime on ESPN. There so that go. was one of uh, <laughs> one of the biggest things that you know for me was was a big big uh, big thing for me. But uh, some of the items that uh, I can control as far as athletic is how strong can I be, how fast can I be, how high can I jump, and those same core values as far as hard work, dedication, regiment, commitment to like bettering yourself translates to the fire service. So I already had that fundamental part of what makes a better firefighter is those same habits. So uh, as I progressed through my life, I was also part of the cadet program, uh, which gives you an in-depth look of the fire service. You go in into the fire station, you create that networking environment with the other firefighters, you create those relationships. So later down on the road, when you're eligible to be hired after 18 years of age, You've already had that network, you've already established those relationships, and you have that connection with someone that they can sit down in front of you and be that panel for you. So I was part of that cadet program all the way through until I was 21, just like uh, Chief McQueen here. After I left college and I got my degree, I was very fortunate to continue to work hard, and then three years after I graduated, I was very fortunate to get picked up by the Orange County Fire 30, which now I'm coming up on my uh, 10th year. So. Mm. So they've been recruiting you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time, it used to be the Santa Ana Fire Department, okay. but uh, I've been absorbed by the Orange County Fire Authority, but it's the best of both worlds now. So I get to, I get to work in the city that I was raised and serve the community that raised me. And for me, that's, that's a, a huge, huge thing for me to give back to my community. So. Yeah, yeah. I just, um, I just finished reading The Alchemist uh, just last night. Yes, actually. The Alchemist. So good, isn't it? We have to read that through for our degree at kinesiology, The Alchemist. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> yep, love it. Incredible book. I feel like yep. it's such a gift. And so it talks a lot about pursuing your personal legend or your dream. And so whether it was after a career change or pursuing sports or whatever it is, I mean, I just kudos to each of you for really pursuing your dream or your personal legend, as you would know. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, so before we jump into the chat, um, Ryan, we do want to ask you, you know, you're the most recent hire. Um, what makes Orange County such a great department to start a career with? Yeah, so I researched a lot of departments, um, and OCFA stood out 
immensely because of all of the opportunities they have within the department. It's a huge department. We offer specialties from, you can be on a FEMA, a USAR team, TRT, you can work on a truck, you can work on an engine, you can go wildland, so many options. And there are a lot of other departments that didn't offer any of that. Um, so that was intriguing to me. I tend to get uh, pretty bored really quickly. So the idea of having all of these opportunities at my fingertips throughout my entire career was really exciting. And that to me was why I went to OCFA. Incredible. And so also, um, I think before when we were talking, you had mentioned being an EMT, having the opportunity to become a paramedic or? Yeah. So I was on probation when I found out that the OCFA would pay for me to go to paramedic school. So I was being paid my salary and school was paid for. And that was something I knew I wanted to do anyway. Um, but to be able to do it so quickly and that they were willing to, as long as I was willing to take on the workload, they were willing to send me. So I was still on probation when I interviewed for that and I was selected and I went to school. So now I'm a paramedic and I've only been on the job for less than three years. Yeah, changing lives. Can you tell us more about the program? About the program? Well, absolutely. <clears throat> so it's a benefit that Orange County provides to its members, its firefighters. And the thing is, you know, 90, over 90 percent of what we do as firefighters is emergency medical in nature. Uh, that's our most common call. So with that, um, we want to basically provide benefit to our members and our firefighters in terms of creating a pathway, like Firefighter Carlisle said. We'll basically pay for you to go through paramedic school within our agency and organization through um, your crews or your mentors or through our training in the EMS department. We'll basically give you a bunch of pre-study so that it can contribute to your success while you're going through school. That benefits the firefighters within our organization, which helps them benefit the organization because they can function at greater capacity uh, on the engines and trucks, which ultimately benefits the communities. So when you have a fire apparatus arrive at your emergency, whether it's an engine or a truck, chances are there's one or multiple paramedics on scene. So in essence, that's a pathway to equip our firefighters to handle any emergency that we get called to. Anytime we arrive on scene, we're well equipped to handle any problem. Okay, man. <laughs> I hope everyone watching at home definitely is listening to all of this, but, but that part specifically, that is an incredible um, program. And so we're going to get into so much more. Um, Mitch, let's go ahead and jump to you. Let's take a few candidate questions. Uh, what are they saying in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to, uh, first we've got a question that just came in from Ignacio Rodriguez on YouTube. And um, he says, I'm still a little confused on if we get hired by a department first or um, get hired and go to the fire academy. So it seems like kind of order of operations uh, is what, what he's wondering about. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Ignacio, I'll answer that question. Every fire authority or fire department is a little bit different, but we'll speak particularly about Orange County. Uh, the process is to first become on the state eligibility list through the FCTC. Uh, there you'll take your CPAT and you'll take your written aptitude tests. Once you're eligible for that, uh, we'll open up a recruitment for the Orange County Fire Authority, and it's actually open right now, all the way until October 9th at midnight. So. Everybody who's on the FCTC eligibility list is eligible to apply. You'll turn in a written application, and then once you get accepted, you'll take an interview. We'll go through the interview, and then you have a chief's interview. And if you're selected throughout the whole process, you'll then start the fire academy. Um, I think you were mentioning it earlier, our fire academies for recruits are 19 weeks, and we'll teach all the firefighters and the firefighter recruits the basic fundamental skills hoses, ladders, engine company operations, truck company operations, and the basic components of special rescue, hazmat, TRT, and uh, USAR. You'll graduate the academy, learning the foundational skill set, and then we'll place you on an engine or truck for your probationary year. So that's our normal process with the Orange County Fire Authority. Okay, and so where can they find more information about that if they were to go online or? Um... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Orange County Fire Authority is on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. We also have a website, um, www.ocfa.org, and that'll give you all the information about our organization, about the recruitment process, and the steps necessary to uh, go through it, as well as the minimum requirements. And lastly, ocfirefighters.org. Okay. So there's a lot of information out there. And lastly, if I can throw <laughs> one more thing, you can visit your local fire station anywhere in Orange County. We service 23 cities. 
visit your local fire station. They're always available. We work 24-7, and you can ask about any questions you have. You'll be able to speak to the fire crews, and they should, they should dial you in. All right, beautiful. Mitch, let's take a couple more questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for everyone watching, we've got a ton of uh, questions and comments coming in, so keep them coming. Uh, we'll do our best to get them answered live here. If we don't, uh, we'll make sure to uh, have some other means to get you your answers. Um, so we have multiple candidates asking about um, how can I get in touch with a recruiter, set up a station visit, and otherwise tips in terms of reaching out to the department and trying to get some FaceTime and uh, do a station visit or ride along? That's a good question. How can I they mean, get tapped in? Uh, let me speak to that one. So, I mean, uh, like Chief said, even if you just walk up to the station, right? It's that simple. They're, they're housed 24, 24 hours a day. Um, and if, if you can get to your local station, ring the doorbell and just let them know that you're interested and in, in that you want to be a part of uh, the fire service, they can get you dialed in. They can get you maybe set up for your next, the next, pro, the next steps, which would be coming to do a station visit, right? So that day might be specifically kind of hard because our days are, we have calendars, we have schedules, we have things we have to do, whether it be training or battalion drills and things like that. So that may, day may not work, but we can definitely set you up or that department can definitely set you up with a day to come back. We'll put it on our calendar and then you are a priority that day as best we can to get you on a station visit. And let me say those are very important, right? If, especially without having the background, those are huge because you learn everything about the fire service culture as well. So it's not gonna be just um, what the academy's like, it's gonna be day-to-day -day life of a, fire, of a firefighter, uh, what are calls like? If you set up the right time and, and the right f time frame, you might be able to go on a few calls. See what does it look like when we're on a call? What does it look like when we're on a fire? If you get lucky enough to be there when something like that happens and you just have that foundation built. Now you're shaking hands with people. You never know who's gonna be on your interview panel, um, but you're shaking hands, you're getting to a face to a name. So when it's time for you to apply, if you've been around the station enough, you've learned the, the, the lingo, you've learned the day-to-day -day operations, it's so much better for you in the interview. You can speak to so much more, right? Because you have a foundational understanding of what the day-to-day -day life is. We'll already have, within those visits, a lot of times we're gonna do a panel interview. So we'll sit here and we'll basically have a person on the other side of the table and we're gonna interview you and ask you the questions that might come up on an interview, like a standard question, so you can feel what it's like to be, you know, get the nerves out. You're in front of four people that are kind of high ranking or whatever they're ranking in the fire service and what does it feel like to be in front of four people? How do I compose myself? Do I have nervous kind of twitches that I do? Do I, um, do I ramble? How do I compose myself? Do I look at everyone on the panel or just that? And we can give all that feedback. And the more you come, the better you'll get. Every time you interview, you're just gonna get that much better. So now when it's time for you to actually apply and go interview, we already know who you are. You know what we do. You understand the process and the nerves kind of drop down a little bit, right? It's just that much easier to sit in front of that panel and not uh, get too nervous and forget what you're gonna say or forget even to talk about yourself. You know what I mean? It's, you, you gotta be able to talk about yourself and what your background is and if you're calm, cool, collected, you've done it before, it's just that much easier to keep a nice flow throughout your interview. Did you get a chance to experience that when you were pursuing station visits? And so I did. Okay. Uh, I, I, after my FCTC, I went and actually, they have, usually we'll have um, firefighters that are there kind of helping facilitate and they'll say, hey, afterwards, if you guys have any questions, talk to them and I went and I asked them, what are the busiest stations so I can go do some station visits so I can learn the culture, I'm behind the eight ball. <laughs> And they told me the three busiest stations and I just cold called, <laughs> figured it out. Hey, and then within that, I just started asking what's the best way? How do I need to look? What do I need to bring? Um, what are the type of questions I need to ask? So I didn't go there to essentially waste their time, right? I want them to know I'm very interested. I'm not just thinking about it. I'm all in, mm -hmm. you know? So I did do the visits, took a bunch of notes, take notes. When you go to these visits, take notes because you're gonna forget names. You're gonna forget what they told you. Take notes, because you never know what's gonna help you down the line, um, and just go after it. It's there for the taking. 
If you've never been to a station, and Mitch, we'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, we definitely want to take a, a couple more candidate questions. But if you've never been to a station visit, is there anything, so you should bring a pen and paper. Should you bring any food? Is there anything else you should be bringing with you for that visit? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so like, uh, so like the station etiquette, usually when you come in, uh, like some of the uh, candidates will come in, they'll bring in different cookies, brownies. It's your opportunity to shine. If you take pride in, we talk about taking pride in cleaning your equipment or, or cleaning your apparatus. If you take pride in something that you bake, whether it's cookies, brownies, any type of snacks, that's your time to shine because we'll remember that. We'll like, oh, remember that one recipe. Yep. As we stay here at the fire station, we're here 24 seven for the whole shift. So we cook clean and, and, and we have our own dorms where we sleep overnight. But if you bring something that's going to be memorable and they're going to remember you that, then be like, hey, look, he's able to, to make that great dish. And then we're able to give you more feedback because we remember you made, an impact, you made an impact on us and we'll make an impact on you by providing you the best direction that we can. So we definitely recommend that. Uh, if it's something that you can't do, we're always you know, happy with going over to the store and getting whatever you want, whatever your favorite candy, whatever it is. That's always a, a generous gesture that we appreciate. So, mm -hmm. very kind, very good, <laughs> Mitch. Uh, let's take one final. Or do we have time for two more questions? Yeah, let's go with that. <clears throat> All right, um, we have a few different questions related to age. Um, so, is there an age limit for becoming a firefighter? And um, specifically, we have a candidate asking about being in their forties or fifties. And we have another candidate asking about being under the age of 18. Um, so maybe you guys can split that up and speak to those kind of different sides of the spectrum. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say there's an age limit as far as the upper end. I mean, I'm 38, I was 35 when I went through. Um, it's just, it's gonna boil down to your physical ability, right? Keeping yourself in shape, getting ready to do the activities that you're gonna do. Look at the FCTC website. They have like walkthroughs of the CPAT and these, they show you what is it gonna look like to do a CPAT. Get out there, uh, mimic these movements. See what it feels like. See if you can you know, do certain things, all these, these movements and stretching and taking care of your body so you can out, get out there and actually push yourself through these movements, right? And if you're able to do that, I mean, anyone that's able to pass the CPAT, that's kind of a foundation that you're in the right amount of shape, the right physical shape to do the job. So it's not gonna be about age as much as it's gonna be your physical ability, what you're doing to prepare, are you keeping yourself in shape? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm 38 years old, and as long as I've kept myself um, within a good um, physical condition, it's, I can do the job, right? And, and so can anyone else out there. Like, so don't limit yourself, don't think that uh, things are too heavy or don't look at some firefighter stature. You know, I know I've seen different, there's a bunch of different sizes and, and heights and shapes of firefighters. They all can do the job. That's all it really boils down to is can you physically handle the job and get after it? Just don't limit yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like maybe there's some additional motivation there too, just being a little older and, and having some life experience. There may be other motivators there, like a family or just, you know, whatever that is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I had, you know, I had, when I started the, when I left law enforcement, I had, you know, I had a kid on the way. And now I have another one. And the good thing about this job is with the schedule we have, you have a lot of time at home too. So it's such a, it's, it's huge to get into something like this, is to get into the fire service because, it takes care of your whole family, right? This is, you can talk to your family, you can interact with your family on your, you, cause you're gone two, three days at a time, right? 72 hours, 48 hours. It's definitely doable. Like I said, I can't, I can't stress this enough. Don't, do not limit yourself and think that this isn't something that's doable because I didn't think it was for a long time. I had no clue, but we're here to tell you specifically, you can do it. Here's the avenues. I had no background. I had no, Ryan had no background. We just went after it because it's something we decide that's gonna work for us, the team atmosphere, the environment. I know it's cliche, but you really, really can't beat this profession. You cannot beat it. Every time I, when I'm telling nephews and anybody I can that wants to, is looking for a career, go be a firefighter. <laughs> just do it, just get after it now because hindsight's 2020, right? If I was 21 and I can go back to you know, Fresno and when I was leaving and just 
just stick it out and go do it, like who knows? Where would I be right now? I might be 15, 20 years in already. Mm -hmm. So don't wait, don't think you're too young or don't think you're too old, don't think any of that, just, just go do it. And if I can segue off sure, that real quick, sure. and then I want to turn it over to Captain Granados for under 18. Mm -hmm. But there's pros and cons in terms of getting hired on to the fire service when you're young, as well as later on in your life. So don't ever let age discourage you from applying to Orange County Fire Authority or any fire department in general. Generally speaking, this is um, a job that causes you to grow up really quick. We see a lot of things. Uh, we're you know, dealt with a lot of life situations and mental stressors. So a lot of times with that life experience comes wisdom. And with wisdom, it helps you better equipped to handle the nature of what the job is. On the flip side, when you get hired younger, it's a very physically demanding job. And generally getting hired younger makes it very, uh, it facilitates your success throughout the duration of your career. Um, but in regards to getting hired prior to 18 or getting your start with the fire service prior to 18, I'd like to turn over yeah. to Captain Granados. So for my personal experience, uh, being a cadet myself and, and working for the Orange County Fire Authority, the cadet program is going to be there for you if you're under the age of 18. Uh, if you go to our webpage, which is www.ocfa.org, you're able to get more information. I would highly recommend if you're under 18, go to your local fire station where they have a cadet post. And the cadet post usually meets once a week and they'll go over to the, the basic skills, which is throwing ladders, pulling hose, even just the station etiquette, whether it's station cleanup duties, whether it's uh, washing the apparatus or making, uh, just uh, polishing up your tools and equipment, make sure your tools are operationally ready. So the cadet program's there. The minimum required is gonna be minimum 14 years of age. You have to have a 2.0 GPA. You have to adhere to, the clean, uh, adhere to the clean grooming standards and also have a clean uh, criminal record. Um, as far as the cadet program, I genuinely believe it's a great start to the fire service. It, it helps in twofold. One, you also get community service hours. So if you're going to go to college and get those community hours, it's very important uh, to, to have as many as you can. And the cadet program provides that ability for you. So you get to serve your community, you get to ride on a fire truck, you get to go on emergency calls, you get to assist the firefighters in those emergencies, and you could do something that's so impactful at, yet at such a young age, and you're exposed to all that important information that it sets you up better later when you're ready and when you've got your degree or when you're after 18, you're eligible to get hired by the OCFA. So I would highly recommend go to www.ocfa.org, go to the uh, cadet page, look at your local uh, cadet post, go there, they meet once every week, sign up for it, uh, and, and make sure you go through the process. Every quarter they have quarterly training, so you're right along certified. So I think that's gonna be the best avenue if you're uh, younger than 18 years of age. There's so much passion um, when each of you either speak about your own journey or just the, the groups, the demographics you're, it is that you're talking about, whether you personally experience them or not. And I just, I want you to know that, that it really comes across. It's, um, you can feel that, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, most definitely. Um, we do want to ask about, um, let's see, so we talked about specialties and programs available at Orange County Fire Authority. Um, how does the department itself, how does OCFA assist um, firefighters in like, you know, training, promotions, and just enriching their career? What does that look like? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll start off. Um, in terms of uh, helping uh, for the benefit of our firefighters, um, we have a lot of programs and assistance and support through um, our local, Local 3631. And this uh, assists firefighters with anything regarding wages, benefits, hours, working conditions, um, <clears throat> because we want to make this place home. We want to make sure that they're receiving value from the organization just like we're giving value uh, back to the employees. We also have um, a peer support program. Uh, through our organization because we kind of mentioned before uh, the nature of what we do uh, sometimes is emotionally stressful and draining and peer support is available to provide us with uh, personal assistance or family assistance in terms of anything that's going on uh, whether it's at work or home from work. Uh, we also have a peer fitness program where we take care of our members um, regarding annual fitnesses, um, fitness examinations, uh, blood draws. We f uh, provide assistance with them maintaining all of their certifications like driver certifications as well. Um, in terms of the promotions aspect, I believe you asked earlier, we have a tr operations training and safety department and through our training department, um, if firefighters want to promote laterally, 
in terms of getting into specialties like hazmat, TRT, the airport, wildland, air ops. Um, we provide assistance there by identifying the subject matter experts. We make um, all of our stations readily available, and they can provide candidates who are firefighters the assistance on how they can prep themselves for the next process. In terms of upward mobility and upward promotion, um, we have an engineer development series. We already talked about medic school for firefighters who want to become paramedics. The next step is to promote to fire apparatus engineer who's the driver of the fire engine or fire truck. Uh, we have a development series, uh, roughly four classes, and they talk to the candidates in terms of everything regarding hose lays, ladder evolutions, pump theory, um, water supply, and they basically contribute to their success as they're going through the engineer academy. The same thing's true for our captain's academies. When firefighters and engineers are ready to promote to company officer, we have a full-on um, six-week academy where we teach them the roles and responsibilities of becoming that frontline supervisor on an engineer truck. And we have these kind of programs all throughout our agency, whether you have vertical advancement operation, aspirations or you want to um, promote laterally. Mm -hmm. so. And how about the union? Um, does the union you know, assist in, in participating in any of this to assist you in your careers as well? 100%. Yeah. Um, this is either um, physical, um, professional, mental. The union provides a lot of assistance, and that's Local 3631. Uh, we have union stewards and union represent, uh, representatives all throughout our agency, and they're readily, readily available anytime you need uh, some assistance. Beautiful. All right, so a uh, question, um, if we could just announce again where candidates can find you online, and we just want to make sure that this is kind of infused throughout the messaging. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, Instagram uh, is going to be OC Fire Authority. That's going to be the tag. Uh, like Chief McQueen said, uh, if you're going to go to the, our website, it's www.ocfa.org. Uh, we're also on, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and also we have our uh, page on uh, YouTube as well for our training and uh, Vimeo as well. So, And I feel like you wanted to say one more. LinkedIn. There LinkedIn. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Frank. Uh, so segueing into talking about requirements and getting hired, the, the big stuff, right? Um, I know OCFA is relatively new uh, to using the FCTC statewide eligibility list and the CPAT. Uh, we do have Mitch, who's the expert, the FCTC program director, here with us. Um, so before we go into the requirements for OCFA, um, Mitch, can you explain to candidates what they have to do to, to get onto the statewide eligibility list? Absolutely. Um, so the very first step is go to fctconline.org and create a profile if you haven't already. Um, inside that profile, you'll be able to add a lot of information about your background, your qualifications, um, and you'll also be able to get results for testing, um, opportunities for preparation and things like that. Um, as far as being on the statewide eligibility list, there are five minimum qualifications, and those are passing the CPAT, the Candidate Physical Ability Test, passing the FCTC written test, being at least 18 years old, having a valid driver's license, and having a high school diploma or equivalent. Um, in addition, we allow you to upload EMT certifications, Firefighter One certifications, and paramedics licenses. We highly encourage that you do so um, because many departments like OCFA require uh, some, of, some or all of these uh, documents. So uh, for instance, with OCFA, make sure you upload your EMT certification so that you will qualify for this job when we send the list over to uh, Orange County. That's right. Make sure you get those documents in. <laughs> All right. So what can candidates expect from the hiring process on uh, OCFA's end of things? So you'll fill out your application and there's the minimum requirements and then there's the highly desirable requirements. So definitely knock out those minimums right away. They're right on the application and the job flyer. And then if you have time, start working towards those highly desirable qualifications. They, like I said, they're not required. You can definitely do it with the bare minimum. I did it myself, but that's definitely not ideal. If you have time um, and maybe the process is taking a long time, start knocking off those highly desirables. And then once you get the um, application in, you just start physically preparing for what's to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. And so uh, let's see, candidates applying, um, when is your application open? When is the closing date? How can they go about that part? So I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> right now, OCFA's application period is open for uh, firefighter recruits, and it's going to be open until October 9th at midnight. So if you're interested in working for the OCFA, we highly encourage you to apply um, from now until October 9th. Beautiful. I'm reminded of something you said earlier about um, when you were going through the application process. It's in the middle of the pandemic. What was that like to apply <laughs> during that time? So I live in San Diego, so I was applying to a lot of the Southern California departments, small and big. Um, and I was just getting applications, interviews, tests, CPATs, biddles, whatever it took, checking off all the boxes, and then everything stopped. Everything stopped. <laughs> People kind of freaked out. Uh, and I noticed a lot of departments just stopped responding. Um, the process kind of paused. There was a lot of silence, whereas prior to March of 2020, it was I finished something, and then I got a response like, OK, here's the next thing to do. And then it got quiet, except from OCFA. They kept charging. And to me, that was super impressive. It said a lot about their ability to keep charging on through adversity. And that's kind of what led me to keep pursuing OCFA more aggressively than other departments. And when it did come down to multiple chief interviews or having to decide where to go, that was a huge reason why I chose OCFA. Okay, they, they pursued you, they wanted you. <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, and so I, again, just extremely happy to have each of you all here today. Uh, the chat is bursting with questions. Uh, so we're gonna get back into the chat to make sure we can answer questions live. I do have one final question before we do that, um, which is uh, for candidates who aren't ready this time around. Uh, maybe they're watching, they know about OCFA, they just learned your, your application is open now. They don't have time to meet the requirements. Um, what can they do to prepare for the next hiring cycle, the next time around? I'll start. Uh, like I said, understand what the requirements are. Maybe this is your first experience to seeing what a job flyer looked like. Go start researching other departments because everyone's going to have something different. And make sure you have all of your ducks in a row before it's too late. So this time around, now you have time to knock out the minimum and the highly desirable. Now you consider maybe going to paramedic school if that's a requirement. Consider go finding a college academy if that's a requirement, um, which it's not for OCFA. But um, just knowing the process, being familiar with it, get on uh, government jobs, know what it feels like to fill out the application online, um, know how to upload documents correctly. Uh, super important because when we have thousands and thousands of applicants, it's a pretty easy decision when someone uploads something incorrectly or doesn't upload it or spells something wrong. Um, so don't be that easy out. Uh, keep pushing through, do everything correctly, and uh, you'll be successful the next time. There we go. Also, uh, keep, keep everything maintained, keep it up to date, keep it current, right? Because the FCTC, the, the CPAT, is, it's good for a year. So don't think that you got it two years ago and like, oh, this, this process came open. Now I can go ahead and apply. You're going to realize quickly that, oh, dang, now I'm out, of, uh, I'm out of date. Now I have to hurry up and try to go get another CPAT. And if there are none like within before you're applying, now you're kind of, it's a setback, right? So maintaining, keeping things current, um, fill out those job application cards. I don't know if we touched on that. Uh, if you go to OCFA.org, there's going to be a job application card you can fill out, which actually you put your email in, you put what you desire, which obviously is going to be fire, uh, firefighter trainee in our case, and they're going to send you emails whenever the flyers come out. They're going to send you the email right away, this day or, or even prior to, maybe a month before. Hey, in a month, month and a half, on September 5th, they're going to be opening for a firefighter. So you have even more time. And then I think those are good for like a year, and then you have to reset your your job interest card. Mm -hmm. And but they'll send you all the information, so you're not in the dark as far as when these uh, departments open up. And you could do that for any department. All the departments are going to have the same kind of layout where they'll send an email saying, "Hey, get ready. This is coming up. Mm -hmm. our, our application date's opening." Mm -hmm. And physically prepare. Yes. Do not so, wait until you get the job offer no. to start working out, no. um, especially if you've been out of sports or you are older and you haven't been physically active. Maybe you did have a desk job and now you're considering fire. Don't wait till you're ready to apply or ready to get hired to start figuring it out. Um, start working out, start exercising, start understanding the physical requirements of being a firefighter and get on top of that as well. 
because even as a professional rugby player, the academy made that look like Girl Scout camp. <laughs> so, Can you say that one more time? <laughs> oh, it was man. hard. <laughs> I, I want to touch up on one more thing on the academic side. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, personally, it was, it was a little bit more difficult academically. So even prepping, if you've been removed from the academic portion, whether it's school, college, high school, and you haven't taken a RIN test, something as simple as reading comprehension. You go on Amazon, you buy a book, reading comprehension prep. If you do, we have mechanical aptitude. I know the FCTC has different sections that test. So mechanical aptitude book on Amazon. And we talked about preparation. And, and one of the biggest things I tell my probationary firefighters is failure to prepare is preparing to fail. So if you're not putting in the work beforehand to be successful, you're not gonna be successful. So doing, uh, getting another book for uh, basic math so you make sure you get those reps. It's all muscle memory. It's all making sure that you, you, you exercise your brain, not only physically, your physical muscles, but also your brain. Academic and physical preparation is always going to be important. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> lastly, um, <clears throat> get your foot in the door with Orange County Fire Authority, especially if you're interested in working here. You may not be ready with all the minimum requirements for our firefighter training application period, but we all understand Orange County is all risk and wildland is a major component of what we do. We do have a hand crew firefighter program, um, and those are hand crew firefighters that engage in project work. They go to wildland fires, they scratch line, um, they cut in, and we have a continuous application period for hand crew firefighters. Uh, the, the minimum requirements aren't as much as firefighter trainee, so while you're doing all these things that we talked about in preparation for the firefighter trainee application period that'll potentially open next year, try to get your foot in the door and look at the hand crew firefighter program as well. You can find that information by station visits or use any of the websites we talked about or www.ocfa.org. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Mitch, let, let's jump into the chat. All right. So before we dive headfirst into requirements for this hiring period, uh, I've got one more question for you, and I wanted to also mention some of the preparatory resources that FCTC has available for candidates. Um, so on the fctconline.org, you can access our free written test study guide. There are sample questions and explanations for the concepts for things like math, mechanical reasoning, reading comprehension. Um, it covers the entire test and what to expect. Um, we also have written test prep classes that you can register for online. Um, and then there's CPAT orientations and practices as well. So I uh, do wanna mention those resources. And finally, uh, if you are needing to get your EMT or paramedic, um, check out the interest card that I think will be linked in the chat uh, for the CalJAC pre-apprenticeship academies. Uh, we have EMT academies and paramedic academies that um, seek to uh, give folks that maybe don't have the opportunities to uh, or the means to get through paramedic school. Um, so check out that interest card and that could be a great way for you to be able to meet some of these requirements the next time. Um, so again, before we uh, jump into all the, the technical requirements and all of that. Uh, Joshua Collins from YouTube wants to know about mentorship. Um, and if you guys can kind of discuss how you went about finding a mentor and what role that mentor played in your hiring process. And I would add to that even your career after the hiring process. Ooh, I like that addition at the end. <laughs> I'll start, I'll start off yeah. with that and then maybe the panel can touch up on some of the items. So we recently created our ORT team, which is our outreach team. All these panelists are on that team. So we're all part of the OCFA. And we, if you go out to any of the station visits, just like Firefighter Shannon said, if you go out to the station, do a station visit, they're going to point us to one of our ORT members and we're going to hopefully provide that mentorship for you. For me personally, I had an LA County captain who reached out to me. I used to be a server at the Newport Beach Country Club. I worked there for five years and I, I uh, served his father, which he was a member of the country club. And he said, my son's an LA County captain. So I was very fortunate. One, I was part of the cadet program. And two, I was able to use him as a mentor. And he was my guide or my, uh, my ability to, or a resource for me to go to if, if I had any difficulty with any type of subject, item, line item, EMT, 
Uh, any team that I had an issue with, he was my direct go-to line. So if you're able to reach out, go to your local fire station, do a station tour, ask that you want to be connected with one of the OR team members, and then they'll give you a direct line to any one of us, and we can provide that mentorship. We want to make sure you work hard, you, you're passionate about what you do, and we'll definitely give you direction if we see the effort uh, that's port, uh, put forth by yourself as well. So. I could speak to uh, females specifically. Uh, when I was kind of researching this in the early beginnings, it was pretty far and few between that I even laid eyes on a female firefighter. Uh, growing up, I didn't know any. So when I started really researching it, I was like, I wonder if this is even possible. And it was, and it was a San Diego female firefighter that I met with during my lunch break at that terrible office job. <laughs> Snuck out, met for a coffee, and what I really appreciated about her was her willingness to just introduce me to the career. She didn't care if I became a San Diego firefighter. She didn't care if I became a firefighter at all, but she wanted to know, she wanted to know that I knew it was a possibility and that I could at least go try it. And now that made such a huge impact on me I want to do the same for other women. So anytime I find out there's a woman in the process, someone thinking about it, someone's daughter, sister, cousin, uh, mother, whatever it is, I'm always like, here's my number. Call me. Let's chat. Let's talk about your options. Let's talk about how you can prepare. Let's figure out what if this is for you. Um, and I think that's super important because it's not every day that a little girl says, I want to be a firefighter or I want to be a fireman because that's so common to hear. Um, so I just want it to be known that you can get strong enough. You can be physically capable of doing this job um, if you're willing to put in the work, and it is an option for every female out there. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Did anyone else want to contribute to that one? Yeah, you know, and just to the mentorship, it's especially with the program we just started, it's going to be front to back in the process. It's not going to be just to get you get your foot in the door. It's through every step in the process. So when you're testing, right before you're testing, before you're interviewing, before your chief's interview, before any of that stuff, we're gonna work with you, you're gonna, we're gonna have the open line of communication, talk to us, so whatever you're feeling, whatever you're confused on, uh, we're gonna walk you through everything. So we're gonna take it one step at a time, so we're not gonna you know, put the cart before the horse here, it's one thing at a time, okay, so if you're ready for, if you're trying to just get in shape, get ready, we'll give you some feedback there will help you out understanding these are the movements, these are the things you need to look up because you might not, maybe they're not watching this right now or when they come to the station, they wanna get it reiterated. Okay, we're gonna walk you through that. We're gonna give you some questions to start thinking about for your interview when it's time to do that. We're gonna get you in the station to do some mock interviews and then we're gonna, we're gonna get you on ride along so you can, every step of the process, we're there until we get you in. And even after that, mentoring, now you're in, now you have more access to us because we might even work together at some point. So it's always gonna be open line of communication. It's always gonna be the mentorship goes front to back. From when you start, what you get out of it is what you put into it though. We're gonna give you as much as you want. Cause I'm, I'm all about trying to give anybody that wants a chance, anybody that's gonna show the effort and show the drive that they wanna be here, let's go. I'm gonna give you whatever I got. My, my phone's always gonna be on. I'm always gonna respond. Cause I love to see people that want to do something and that wanna put the effort forth and that want to be there. And that see that you see the desire in people like, it's like a hidden gem, you know what I mean? One of the best kept secrets being a firefighter, to me, honestly, like I'm passionate about it because I've done a lot of jobs. I've, had, I've done a lot of things I didn't like to do. So to fall in line with something I do like to do and to have the passion to go to work and not wanna not have to like dread going to work, you wanna share that. With anybody that's willing to, to come work hard, to put in that work, it's here for you and it's, it's an amazing job. I can't, I can't stress that enough. Um, just go get it and we're gonna be there to help you. There's a lot of people, everyone I work with at my station, any of the stations I've been to, everyone is willing to give to anyone that wants to put in to us. You give, you give to yourself, you give to us, we're gonna give it right back to you and we're gonna push you all the way through the process as far as we can get you with your effort. You sound a little passionate. <laughs> I think you like your job, maybe you love it. <laughs> this is beautiful, beautiful. Did you wanna add anything to that? Too? No, they covered it all. Okay. Um, the thing about mentorship is it's key. There's so many paths into the fire service because everybody comes from different upbringings, different vac backgrounds, different uh, age groups, sets of life experiences. The good thing about Orange County Fire Authority is that we're so big and we're pretty much a small sample size of the entire population. I recommend going to your local fire station or any fire station that you have access to and reaching out to the members. They will plug you in with the appropriate mentor suited to your pathway 
and they'll get you uh, on the right track. That could be through the EMS route, becoming a paramedic before you come to Orange County. That could be through the wildland route, becoming a hand crew firefighter before you become a full firefighter trainee. Um, it could be just coming off the street, coming from the colleges, uh, doing sports and everything. So there's a place for everybody in Orange County, and there's a mentor for everybody. And the outreach and recruitment team, it's our goal to identify those mentors and identify people like Firefighter Dorsey was saying, who have the passion, we will match your effort and we'll do everything we can to basically um, get you on the right path. Because mm -hmm. all you gotta do is win it, for all sure. All right, there we go. Uh, I do want to um, remind you all of, there's, a, there's an episode on this platform, uh, the Becoming a Firefighter page. And so it talks a lot about mentorship and you get to see the relationship of a candidate who came to one of our Firefighter Career Expos she meets a firefighter there and how that relationship develops over time. So please go ahead and check out that episode if you have more questions about mentorship and just what that relationship could evolve into. Um, lots and lots of gems um, here um, as well as in that episode. Um, so Mitch, back to you. All right. Um, so as I alluded to before, we have numerous questions about the requirements for this hiring process. Um, and. Uh, before I turn it over back to you all for, to give us the, uh, I guess, the quick overview, maybe the outline of the process uh, before we dive into the weeds, I did want to let our audience know that uh, the job announcement for this recruitment cycle is available on Orange County's website, as well as fctconline.org. Um, I believe we'll be including a link in the chat or the comments below. So read that announcement. Um, pretty much the answers to most of these questions can be found in there. Um, and so I just wanna make sure that our audience and anyone that's uh, hoping to become a firefighter and applying for these jobs, uh, the first step is review and read that announcement very carefully, very closely, um, because following instructions is a huge part of being a firefighter. And so it's kind of your first test. Uh, so check out that job announcement. And um, with that, I'll turn it back over to the panel to uh, give us kind of the overview or outline of the hiring process. Sure. Yeah, so like we said, um, for the firefighter recruitment process, uh, make sure that you're eligible on the statewide eligibility list through FCTC. That's gonna take care of your CPAP as well as your written examination. Uh, once you have that eligibility, you'll go and complete a government jobs application for our firefighter training recruitment. Uh, once again, it closes on October 9th. Um, after that, they're going to uh, filter through the candidates, make sure everybody's eligible and qualified, and um, Orange County will require you to take a BIDL, physical fitness examination as well. More information on that as you go through the process. Um, once you complete all those necessary requirements, you'll be invited to an oral interview panel. Uh, you'll be sitting with a group of firefighters and they're just gonna ask you general questions in terms of your knowledge, skills, and abilities, or your training, education, and experience, and how it's prepared you to be a firefighter with Orange County Fire Authority. They might ask you a couple of situational questions, and the whole theme and goal of the interview is to assess the candidate's uh, work history, assess his uh, feasibility in becoming an Orange County firefighter. Um, if you're selected and you pass that oral interview, you'll be scheduled for a chief's interview where you're meeting with the fire chief. And that is uh, an additional screening process. After that, um, there will be a pre-academy fitness fair and they'll run you through a couple of hose evolutions, ladder evolutions, stair climbs, uh, equipment familiarization, and then the Recruit Academy will start if you're fortunate enough to be selected. With the Recruit Academy, it's 18 to 19 weeks, um, and that's gonna teach you everything in terms of the fundamental components of the job. Um, engine company operations, truck company operations, uh, specialized rescue, hoses, hose, ladders, as well as hand tools. That's gonna be the whole recruitment process. Once you're successful in graduating the academy as a recruit, you'll then start your probationary year as a new firefighter. We'll send the candidates to either engine or truck companies, depending on availability, and that's where you truly learn how to do the job. You're putting the basic core fundamental skill sets into practice on emergency operations, real life calls. Um, we'll test you at the six month mark, as well as the one year mark, and the candidates who are successful through all the processes and the end of probation are full-time Orange County firefighters. So, 
All right, all right. <laughs> Mitch, back to you. All right. Um, again, I uh, can't really call uh, our viewers out specifically because a lot of people are asking the same types of questions. Um, but uh, what is the FCTC score that uh, is required for OCFA? I can go ahead and answer that one. Um, traditionally, to pass the FCTC written test, you need a 70%, um, but OCFA is requiring at least 80% on the FCTC written test. Um, so again, in terms of preparation, if you need to, uh, to increase your score, you can take the test once every 30 days. Um, so you have the opportunity to try to improve your scores if you need to. Um, there's also a couple questions about uh, availability of testing dates. And um, I would, without looking at the calendar right now, I would just tell you uh, there was a date added, in, a CPAT date in San Diego on October 7th um, that was added this morning, I believe. And in general, keep checking back on our website because cancellations often occur, new dates are added as other events fill up. So make sure if you can't get into an event, make sure that you're regularly checking our website uh, and you should be able to do so. If you're really having a hard time, give us a call and we'll do what we can to help you. Um, so we have a question from Jeff who is wondering, uh, do you know how many you're hiring for this current cycle? It's a good question. What are the chances? He wants to know if he can get hired. <laughs> I, I would say there's a gentleman in, in the room, Duke, who's HR. Uh, if we can go to that panel and ask the panel, that would probably be the best. The academies are normally 50. Yeah. So we normally cap it out at 50. Okay. Um, I think I'm almost positive they'll have a list of 100 uh -huh. um, to set up the next two academies potentially. But your goal is to be into the top 50 um, is the quick, short, dirty answer. Got it. And we also have, your, to your reference point, uh, Duke Steppy, the expert himself, my <laughs> personal bestie. Uh, he's in the chat answering questions as well. So awesome. uh, if that was nice. your question at home or wherever you're watching from, uh, make sure that you're reading the answers in the chat as well. Yeah, so Mitch, back to you. Let's take a few more questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a number of questions about the interview process in particular um, and uh, I guess the significance of testing versus the oral interview um, and how those are weighed uh, when making decisions about hiring. Um, so any input that you guys could give on, you know, the importance of testing versus the importance of the interview, uh, that would be helpful. I'll start. Um, so you'll take your test, you'll get your score. That's pretty basic. There's a score you need, pass or don't pass. Um, and that's up to you and your preparation for that. As for the interview, you are on a panel with uh, engineers and captains from our department, uh, three or four of them, one of you. There's a list of questions that they'll go through, and that's your chance to really express who you are as well as answer their questions appropriately. But in the end, this is a job where we live together. Uh, we want to know if you're someone we want to live with. Um, this isn't a job where you're applying and you're only with them from 9 to 5 and you get an hour break away from your coworkers. We're with each other all day long and all night long. So they want to know if you're a cool person. They want to know what you're passionate about. They want you to express your personality. Don't be stiff and just talk about your fire science classes. What else do you have to offer? So that interview could be really a big game changer if there's a lot of people with the same score as you on the written test and you shined or you were super different and attractive to them and you express your personality in an interview that could be the game changer to get it to the next step mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so also um and we spoke about this a bit earlier but for people that are coming in um, they do really well in the interview and they showcase their personality, they have the experience, um, the highly desired qualifications, but they're not familiar with the hierarchy of the fire service. How can they go ahead, not only just what is the hierarchy of the fire service, but how advice on how to adjust to that? 
if that's not what you're used to? Okay, so that's a really good question. I think before we start talking about the hierarchy of the fire service, it's important to understand why the hierarchy exists. So traditionally speaking, in fire departments and fire authorities throughout the nation, we model our infrastructure and our hierarchy off the uh, basically a paramilitaristic type structure. And that's because the nature of what we do on emergency responses is very quick, it's very dynamic, it's very dangerous, it can be very hazardous, and it's important for everybody to understand their role so that they can operate effectively in a team. Everybody ha is basically like a cog in the entire will. And when everybody's operating in that framework, uh, we quickly, safely, and efficiently mitigate the emergency. So with that being said, we model, model it after the military. Um, I'll start from uh, the bottom and then go up the totem pole. First and foremost uh, is a firefighter. Firefighter um, handles the manipulative skill sets in terms of all the aspects of what we do. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. You can also become a paramedic firefighter, dual classification. You're utilized on 90% and greater of the EMS as well as the firefighter skill sets. Generally speaking, on each engine and truck, we have two firefighters. One is a firefighter and one's a firefighter paramedic. The next step up is the engineer or the fire apparatus engineer. He or she is the one that drives the apparatus, whether it's the engine or truck, and they function in essence as a second in command. And their primary role is to get crews to and from the emergency incident uh, safely and effectively, as well as providing ladders, uh, water, um, lighting, additional things that the emergency might require. After the engineer is the company officer. Every piece of equipment in terms of our engines and our trucks and our specialty apparatus has a company officer. It's a first line supervisor. And it's important for the crew to understand the chain of command because on an emergency incident, the supervisor basically articulates his leader's intent and the crew um, will function in alignment with that. After the company officer or the fire captain uh, is the battalion chief. And a battalion chief manages anywhere from five to nine stations in a geography, sometimes a city or multiple cities. Um, and they're, they're the highest ranking official on the emergency scene. After the battalion chief is a division chief. And a division chief handles one or multiple cities. In essence, he's the city's representative and the fire chief within one of our 23 cities. After the division chief is the assistant chief. We have three assistant chiefs. And after the assistant chief is the deputy chief. And lastly, at the top of the hierarchy is the fire chief, uh, Chief Fennessy. And at the ultimate top of the hierarchy is the community, because we work for the community. That's kind of our infrastructure and the hierarchy within the Orange County Fire Authority. And we function like that because of the nature of what we do. Um, there's a lot of times where you know there's casual conversation, but on emergency incidents, it's important to understand the directions, the leader's intent, and then everybody quickly and effectively carries out uh, their duties. Just like on a team, if everybody stays within their role and does their job well, the team's going to win. The same thing's true with the fire service. If everybody stays within their role and does their job well, the engine or the truck company or the entire battalion will be effective at anything that we're called to. The best way to understand the culture of our organization and how firefighters function within the chain of command and the hierarchy is getting to know firefighters. Go to your local fire station, um, visit them, spend a couple of days not a couple of days, but a couple of hours with them or do ride-alongs, and it'll all start to make sense. And the firefighters can tell you exactly why we function the way that we do. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> all right. So, Mitch, let's jump back to you. We'll take two more questions. All right. Um, so, again, uh, there are a lot of questions about oral interview. Um, so, I guess to kind of combine them and summarize, I would say what are your tips for preparing for the interview process and making yourself stand out compared to other candidates? I'll take a little bit. I think the panel, the whole panel will have input on this, but I personally believe in coming in and the preparation. Always, like I, we talked about earlier, failure prepares, preparing to fail. So going in, get the reps. We talk about sitting in front of that panel. We'll get as close as we can to that uh, mock interview. We'll have three people sit in front of you and we'll ask the questions, not the exact questions, but we'll ask 
similar questions or the same category questions, and we'll see that response will give you true feedback based on what you do on that station visit. Additionally, one of the items is gonna be some of the homework you can do back home. We talk about everyone has a cell phone. You could put the cell phone in front of you. You can look at the di different types of movements that you do. If you uh, do uh, filler words, if you wanna work on your vocabulary, expand your vocabulary, you could record yourself, do that multiple times, do those multiple reps, and then improve yourself and see that progress as you continue to do it multiple times. So I believe you could either do homework back at home, recording yourself, like uh, Chief McQueen said, you can do a station visit. We'll do the best job we can, provide that accurate feedback, and give you the best uh, option or the best solutions to, to give better answers. So if anyone else has that on the panel. Yeah, I'd say being able to expand on the simplest skill from mm -hmm. the most basic job. Um, it could be flipping burgers, or you could have been a Navy SEAL. Either way, it takes like time management, following directions, listening to your boss, doing what you're told, having work ethic. So don't belittle what's on your resume, um, especially if you're younger and you're just getting started, or if you're older and you have zero fire experience. You still have experience, and be able to expand and talk about what you have experienced. And um, just don't be shy, be your biggest fan. And uh, the other thing is look good, play good. That goes for everything. Get your suit dialed, get your hair done, shave your head, whatever it is you need to do. But don't show up with a, a suit that doesn't fit or just you want to look good because that's like our first impression of you. Take a shower. <laughs> One of the one of the viewers uh, posed the question, how can we stand out in an interview? So in essence, sometimes it is a numbers game. But my advice to a candidate wondering how he or she can stand out is ultimately be yourself. And here's the reason why. There's only one Captain Granados. So there's only one firefighter paramedic, Grand Carlisle. There's only one firefighter, Dorsey. They each have individual stories. They each have unique skill sets and attributes that they can bring to the organization that provides value and ultimately providing value to the community. The best way to stand out in an interview panel is to be yourself. Talk about who you are, communicate to the panel where you came from, and how your experiences make you, you, and what kind of value you can provide um, to the organization, to the fire department, to the community. That's the best way to stand out. It's because nobody has your same story, and that goes for all of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd say to, to touch on all that, be enthusiastic. Set the tone early with your interview, right? Be enthusiastic. When you're talking about yourself, don't be monotone or, or seem mundane like you're boring to you. You know, these, these panelists, they're going through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interviews a day. So if you're going in and the first day, how are you doing? And you're just, oh, I'm okay, sir. I'm good, sir. Like, use the extremes. Fantastic. Out, out, outstanding, sir. You know what I mean? Like, then get, give them a good handshake because these are the things they're going to remember, right? Because if they're coming after lunch and it's one in the afternoon or your last interview of the day and it's 4 or 5 p.m. and they've heard 10 people in the day, you know, you can kind of disappear in their mind pretty quickly if you're not coming in to, to set yourself apart, coming in enthusiastic, coming in happy to talk about, happy to be a part of this interview, happy that they, they, they gave you a chance, right? Because if you're just kind of cruising through, they can sense that. And then would it, what if you and 10 other people have the same, the exact same qualifications? What does set you apart? You know what I mean? It's, it's your enthusiasm, it's your handshake, it's how good you look in your suit because you took the time to put that extra effort into setting the tone of your interview and being memorable, right? That's the, be memorable, make yourself stand out in every way you can, but that's such an easy way to do it is before you've said a word, you look good, you have a good handshake, you're smiling, your posture's good. Like these things like pep up the interview panel, like, oh, okay, they're coming in, they're happy, they're excited, they're smiling, they're, they don't, even if they're nervous, I can't tell. You know. Yeah, the majority of communication is nonverbal, so mm -hmm. you're communicating the moment you step in the room before you get there even. Mm -hmm. so, excellent, excellent advice. Um, we're going to go ahead and take one final question um, from the chat. Mitch? All right, so before I get to this uh, last question about requirements uh, for this hiring period, um, again, uh, we'd love to know where you're at. So if you're in the audience following along, let us know in the comments. Where are you at in the process? Are you going to apply to OCFA in this process? Have you applied elsewhere? Have you met some of the requirements? Uh, let us know where you're at, we, we'd love to hear. Um, but for our panel, we have a few different questions about whether or not there are any preferences in the hiring process. For instance, uh, it was mentioned being local uh, 
or having a military uh, experience um, or participating in the cadet program. Um, so is there any preference provided for any kind of special subgroups? So <clears throat> that's kind of a loaded question, just because, well, and I say that because um, we're such a large agency, we're so complex, we service a whole bunch of different geographies, demographics. Um, there are the minimum qualifications, but we prefer the highly desirable. If you come in as a paramedic already, that's incredibly valuable as an applicant because you're already suited to engage in over 90% of what we do. You're already adding value onto the team, the engine or the truck company. If you come from a military background, you're already providing that knowledge and that culture in terms of how we operate in the paramilitaristic um, structure. We understand that you're gonna most likely be successful in our academy because you work hard, chain of command, uh, you've been through a lot in any branch of the military. We also do prefer, a lot of times, life experience. Um, it's a very sometimes hazardous and chaotic job, and those who come in with a little bit of life experience tend to do better because the job does make you grow up really fast. Having said that, we're also very open and willing, and we look forward to younger applicants um, because we can basically train you in the Orange County way, and we understand that we're getting a lot of value from you as a candidate, potentially a 30 or 35 year career. So I wouldn't be able to mention one particular preference off the top of my head, because also the needs of the community is constantly changing as the fire service is constantly evolving. My recommendation is to always be a student of the game. Always do what you can to up your skill set, whether that's your training, your education, your experience, your specialty certs, or your qualifications, and get to know the firefighters. That's the best way to make yourself the most competitive uh, for the application process. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was well said. <laughs> um, speaking about life experience, I do, um, outside of the chat, have a couple more questions I'd like to get through, um, re eventually resulting in any advice or any um, maybe a one word answer you'd like to leave the audience with. Um, but speaking of life experience, um, Ryan, can you speak to, um, you know, just kind of being the most recent hire with the department, or at, at least with the panel here today, um, your experience during your probationary period. So you go through the process, you get hired. What does that first year to year and a half, 12 to 18 months look like? Specifically as it relates to like work-life balance. Does that exist? What even is that? <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so the academy is Monday through Thursday, all day. Uh, Four o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night pretty much is when you're waking up and getting home. Um, so. But through that entire time, you're getting every skill you need to be successful out in the field or on the fire ground or even just at station. But there is that moment in time when you pass your tests and you get towards the end and there's those like two weeks left of the academy and you're like, oh my goodness, like, wait, now I actually have to go do it? Who am I gonna do it with? Like, these are my guys. I just did it all with them and now they're not gonna be there. I'm gonna go by myself. I was just following this guy for the past 19 weeks and he's not gonna be there anymore. <laughs> So there was this little panic for me. Um, but you go, you meet your crew on your first day, and that's kind of when you realize, like, OK, this is my team. That's my captain. They want me to be successful. They need me to be successful so that they can be successful. And that's kind of when I realize, like, you exhale, and you're like, OK, I have all the tools I need. I just have to start figuring out which tool I need and when, and start kind of learning that symphony of an incident and it's really cool once you start learning like the exact roles of everyone on your crew, what you're capable of. It's okay if you're not capable of something because there's gonna be someone else who is or you'll quickly learn how to become capable of that. So I'd say my first few days in the, the fire station were literally the first seconds I've ever experienced in a fire station as a firefighter. And I said before, it was like being a baby giraffe, like <laughs> walking around. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to put my stuff. I didn't know how to make my bed. I didn't know which dorm I was going to. I didn't know what side of the engine to walk to. Um, so it was just like, what do I do? And I just kept writing. Every day I had this list, like, OK, I'm going to get here. I'm going to do this. Check it off. And then someone on the crew would be like, hey, make sure you get this done. And I'm like, OK, I'll make sure I do that tomorrow. And eventually I just had a routine. And you start figuring it out. Um, you feel more comfortable asking questions. Uh, you also feel comfortable not asking questions <laughs> and learning how to figure it out on your own. If someone asks you to do something, you do everything in your power to figure it out without having to ask for help. Um, so you learn that real quick. 
Um, and then it's really cool as you start training with your crew, because now you're applying the skills that you did in the academy, but now you're learning how to do it on an actual incident. So the academy is like a super safe environment. You're allowed to make mistakes in the academy. Uh, you're allowed to make mistakes on an incident too, but now it's like, okay, wait, we have an actual building that's on fire, or we have someone in that vehicle. I gotta get dialed. I have to really know what my crew wants and what's expected of me and perform. And I think with my sports background, that's kind of where I thrive is, I like to be put under pressure and know like oh, this is your expectation, meet it or get out. So that's kind of where it hits the fan, so to speak. Um, and that's really where you become and flourish as a firefighter, as someone part of a crew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that background in, in sports or, or athletics really helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the military or just. I, I had like, like just like uh, firefighter Carlisle said that I was a captain when I was in high school you know the basketball captain and I'm directing the the player the direction and those skills is what teaches me right now how to tell my crew members okay on this vehicle fire I need this hose line pulled here I need the engineer to do this and that's the play that we do in order to be successful on that mission so that connection or that background that we have makes us more successful in our career so all right, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so quick pivot. Uh, <laughs> we are going to take two more questions from the chat. Uh, Mitch, let's jump back to you. All right, um, and I know it's uh, getting a little late, so we'll, we'll try to make it quick, but um, related to the Academy, um, we have a number of questions about um, just how difficult <laughs> would you say it is? Um, what are the expectations when showing up on day one? Um, and is there a stipend or do you get paid while you're in the academy? Those are both good questions. One. Yeah. Um, so one, we yes, we do get paid. <laughs> That's a good thing about uh, the bigger departments is once you're hired, this is now your job. So you are, from day one of the academy, you're getting paid as a firefighter trainee um, and it's tough. Um, I thought I was prepared, but it's not only about being physically prepared, not only about having a sports background, now you're wearing these turnouts that they don't breathe. There's no air coming out of these things. So if your academy's in the summer, uh, I suggest you maybe go get a sweatsuit um, while you're preparing, put sweats on, full sweats, put a vest, a weighted vest on. These things are gonna accumulate to you to heat retention because these things retain heat and I don't care what shape you're in. Um, you know, I've heard of CrossFit people having this, having getting broke down just as quickly as anyone else, right? So it takes a while to acclimate yourself to the heat retention from these, from the turnouts. Uh, it's definitely doable, but you need to make sure before the academy, you're learning how to hydrate early. You're learning how to eat, what meals, what what carbs, what things work well with your body, what what works well with you. Um, pushing yourself through eight to 10 hour days of wearing this stuff all day long. Um, you're gonna sweat a ton. You need to know how to hydrate with electrolytes, with water, how is, how is that balance gonna work for you? Um, so as early as you can, get out there in the heat. Um, don't just go out in shorts and a t-shirt because there's not gonna be one day in the academy that you're in shorts and a t-shirt, except for maybe for PT prior to wearing this stuff for eight to 10 hours. So. The best I can, that's what I can say, is just kind of what, what they say in the middle, embrace the suck. It's, <laughs> it's not gonna be fun, no matter what. Don't expect it to be easy, but the reward on the back end is totally worth it. But I mean, like I said, I've mentioned earlier, I was a little older uh, going through the academy, going through this, this acclimation. I had no clue what to expect. And those first four to five weeks for me where the learning curve was rough, the physical aspect was rough, the heat retention was rough, but after a while you just get numb to it and you just know every day is gonna be rough and you just come and you just do it. Everyone else is going through the same struggle. Talk to your peers, make sure, and that's the good thing about the fire service about living together is it's almost like a, a, a support group every day because we're not, like I said, we're not going home at five o'clock uh, when you're on the job. You, you might talk through some, some crazy things you see. We work out together so we see each other kind of, we push each other through these things. So as that team, um, you are gonna see the tough days, but, but they're worth it. And then it does get easier. Eventually you start learning how to be more um, efficient with your movements, right? Where you're not wasting so much time when you learn how to pull hose or throw ladders. You learn how to make the steps quicker. You're not as nervous, so you're not hyperventilating while you're doing these drills. Uh, so I would say definitely look at OCFA on YouTube, on Vimeo, OCFA training videos. We have videos 
on every basic hose pull you're going to do in the academy, every basic ladder throw you're going to do in the academy, and much more, and you'll learn the verbiage. Right, the verbiage is important too of what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing, and you'll be that much more prepared when you come in. So the whole first day isn't, I have no clue what I'm doing. I have, I am, I am just lost. Right. Right. It, the, you can see it. Mental rep, at least a mental rep helps too, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I want to touch one sure. thing. Uh, Chief Chief McQueen uh, touched on it earlier. Uh, there are prep days in our academy. We're very fortunate. Our organization invests in you. They know you are an asset. So they're investing a lot of money to make sure that you're successful. One of the biggest things are going to be the pre-academy uh, physical days. That gives you ready, gets you ready for with the movement prep, with the physical fitness part of it. But just know that we're there. Uh, there's other or previous academies that have gone through what they needed to go to. They will come in on your first day or a week before your academy and they're gonna to talk to you what the expectation is. You know, we'll line up before the, at the gate at 550, make sure you're in. So all those small details will be passed on to you by the previous academy, whether it's the liaison, I don't know what they call it now, but the previous academy uh, uh, valedictorian, they'll pass it on to you. That way you know on day one, this is gonna be the expectation. Get in the line at 550 with your vehicle, make sure your, your uniform's pressed, make sure your boots are polished, make sure your turnouts are dry. All those different expectations are small little minute details that a lot of people overlook. That's going to be talked to you by the previous academy and the physical side, like Chief McQueen said, that we have those prep days uh, and our, our uh, department investing you make sure that you're going to be as successful as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Mitch, did you have uh, another question? All right. Absolutely. We've got, uh, I've got one last question and a great question from Caesar on YouTube. Um, who wants to know uh, how has uh, being from a, a group that's traditionally underrepresented in the fire service, how has that affected you becoming a firefighter and being a firefighter? Has that made it more difficult or harder um, in the process? And if you could just speak to um, your experience as uh, being from one of those underrepresented groups. We all have a story. <laughs> um, I touched on it before. It seemed not attainable to me because there were so few women. Um, but then once you learn the process, uh, we're all tested the same way. We all have the same physical requirements and expectations. And you just rise to the occasion. Um, if the four of us were a crew, like what's expected of me is the same as what's expected of six foot four Shannon. So uh, we work together, we work, we lean into our weaknesses and definitely don't isolate yourself. Uh, don't see yourself as that minority. We're all here. I think that's one really cool thing about the fire service is the diversity and how open we are to everyone to come in. Um, so just be willing to work, say yes, um, and go for it. <coughs> Uh, speaking with that uh, question, one of the things that agencies throughout the nation and particularly the Orange County Fire Authority is focusing on is um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because everybody does come from uh, a different background, a different upbringing. Some people may not have the same opportunities as others. It's our goal with the Orange County Fire Authority to actively engage in recruitment, actively engage in outreach. So we can speak to those communities, we can speak to those populations, we can speak to those who are underrepresented and um, provide them with uh, the tools they need to basically follow the path to being a firefighter. We talked about it earlier before, everybody's path is a little bit different. One of the things in Orange County Fire Authority that we're fo focusing on um, is actively engaging with the community, understanding uh, the diversity within our organization and the communities we serve, leveraging different thoughts and ideas, and basically recognizing that we're all uh, coming together to meet the same common goal, and that ultimately is community service. In terms of the equity aspect, like uh, Firefighter Carlisle was talking about, everybody's ultimately held to the same standard. That's in the testing process, that's in the uh, recruit academy, as well as throughout the duration of your career. So the equity comes into play in that even though you might be an underrepresented um, demographic, everybody's held to the same standard and the resources in the Orange County Fire Authority are available to everybody to pursue whatever career avenue they want, whether that's upward mobility or lateral uh, mobility. 
And lastly, inclusion. Uh, the thing that we're focusing on heavily in Orange County Fire Authority is including everybody. What does inclusion mean? That means getting to know your coworkers. That means getting to know your community. That means getting to know where they come from and then basically coming to a common ground, right? Um, so I would, I would venture to say that all of us uh, would agree, yeah, we do come from different backgrounds, but the opportunities are um, equal. Uh, we as an organization are actively reaching out to make it attainable for everybody to become a firefighter. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything you wanted to add? No. No, I mean that that just that's pretty much it. It's that's part of us joining this the the outreach program, right? Is uh, getting to those communities that might not have the the representation or the means to get a fire engine to a school, you know, to the, where the kids that we create that core memory, right? Some of these kids, that's you hear a lot of these stories in the interviews. Uh, the first time I wanted to be a firefighter because they came to my school and they let me get on the fire engine, and from there I was hooked. Right, so it's it's reaching out, is making sure that these other communities know that this is attainable to anyone. It's not just uh, you have to live here, you have to have this uh, social economic status or social economic status or whatever it may be. It's find it, go to a station, meet the firefighters, start the process, and uh, put your all into it. And it's it's a very attainable career. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Uh, you said something earlier. You said. Um, that I think speaks to the equity piece you were just mentioning. You said, you know, at the fire department, there's so many different people. You know, they're all different sizes. Everyone brings something different to the table um, and just the value in that. So um, absolutely incredible. Um, I would like to ask for any final words of wisdom for everyone that has watched and, and that's hanging out with us until the end, for folks that won't see this episode until later. Um, if you have any words of wisdom that you would like to leave the candidates with that are watching today. I would say just uh, be determined. Uh, it's going to be a difficult path. It's going to be very competitive. Be determined, work hard, and always make sure that you're working towards that one goal. And don't, don't get down on yourself if it doesn't happen that first year or second year. Just look for improvement. Where can I get better? And keep continuing down that path. A lot of people take you know the one year, two year, time, two year time frame in order to get hired, but some take a little bit longer. It's like we all come from different backgrounds. It's gonna be specific to you, but just keep working forward, keep getting better, and and and, and it'll happen for you. So, mine would be be prepared and stay prepared. So don't just be prepared for one application at a time. Be prepared for the entire journey. Um, you don't want to show up to your interview and that be your first one. Or if it is your first one, don't expect it to be your best one. Um, take every rep. Um, be kind to yourself throughout the process. But ultimately, this is on you. Uh, we're giving you all the resources. FCTC has such a helpful website, ocfa.org, all of the information. But we can't hand it to you. You have to do a lot of the legwork yourself. So be prepared and show up ready to play. Well said. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> nothing good in life comes easy. I think we can all agree with that. Uh, being a firefighter and the path to becoming a firefighter can potentially be a long road or a difficult road, but I can tell you it is well worth it. This is one of the best jobs um, in the world. And Orange County is a really great agency, probably one of the most premier agencies that there is. There's a lot of help along the way. Uh, there's a lot of resources available to you. You just have to want it, reach out, and go and grab it. It's going to be well worth it. We encourage everybody to apply. That's it. I mean, just go get it, period. And if you don't get it the first time, go get it again and keep going till you get it. You're going to get it eventually. Just go get it. If they see your face, they're going to see you keep going. It's there. It's there for the taking. You won't regret it. Put in the time, put in the effort, get after it. All right. All right. Well, you, you heard it here. <laughs> uh, well, thank you again so much for, for being here, for coming to Sacramento to participate, to serve as panelists in our studio. Uh, thank you again. And also a huge thank you um, to your leadership team, you know, to your fire chief, your labor president, your labor vice president, um, HR, just all the folks that, that participated in helping to make this happen. And the biggest of shout outs uh, to each of you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, Enjoy most it. definitely, most definitely. Um, all right, so for those of you watching at home, by now you have to be interested in becoming a firefighter. Uh, based on that, I highly recommend you go ahead, that you subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Uh, make sure that you like the channel. Uh, make sure that you turn on your notifications for future episodes like Ritz um, and plenty of other videos that we post as well. 
Um, in addition to YouTube, we are also on the gram. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Becoming AFF, the one right on your screen. Uh, so with that, please go ahead and mark your calendars. We'll be hosting a Firefighter Career Expo. We'll be in Sacramento on October 21st. We'll be in San Diego County. This is happening on November 4th. OCFA will be at the San Diego Expo. Uh, make sure that you use the link within the chat or fctconline.org to go ahead and register. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Peace out, everyone. <laughs>